Bonjour and bienvenue à Paris. Bonjour. If you haven't already guessed, Craig and I are reporting live from the 2018 Paris Motor Show here in the City of Love. City of Light. Is that is that what it is? I'm pretty sure it's light. I got it messed up. Anyway. Maybe it's both, but... The City of Love and Light and Cars. In this case, for this week at least, Cars yeah. as well. So uh, we're here at the show. What do you think so far? What are your general vibes? Oh gosh, it's it's sort of a show in decline it seems, doesn't yeah, it? It's the number a of automakers bit, pulled out. And... It's a little bit of a quiet show. Yeah. There weren't a huge amount of debuts this time around. Uh, a lot of automakers just didn't even show up. Mm -hmm. Like Nissan's not here. Like Volkswagen, Volkswagen Ford, Renault, or uh, yeah, Nissan. Nissan's Renault is definitely here. Uh, Renault is here. Renault is definitely here. If they the pulled out of Paris. It's like just we're done. Here. It would have been a disaster yeah. for them. Yes. <laughs> um, but luckily Porsche is here, and we're starting off our walk around of the motor show at the Porsche booth. Mm -hmm. uh, and they have a lot of really awesome historical stuff here from their museum, actually. Do they? Yeah, these are all like super important models for Porsche, and uh, it's their 70th birthday this year. Sorry, yeah. So let's walk over I to... I would have thought they were older than 70, but I guess that's about right. That's about right. I'm pretty sure they got it right. I mean, it's their own marketing <laughs> they have it right. exercise. They better have it right. Um, yes. So we're just going to walk over here to see the car that debuted at the show. Actually, I'm I'm wrong. It didn't debut here. Um, it was, it's a it's a concept sort of. It's a concept sort of. So up until the Paris Motor Show, this which you're going to see in a minute is the 911 Speedster concept. And at the Paris Motor Show, it stopped being a concept mm. because they <laughs> they basically decided that they're going to produce it because the response to it was so good. And they're only going to make 1948, which yes. corresponds to the year I guess at the first 356 was uh, sort of uh, approved to be sold, right? Yes, and so that's very that's cool kind of based on the model right over here, Ben, if you want to swoop over. This I is the OG 356. <laughs> I kind of like it more. I know you do because you just like old things. I do. But uh, So this 911 Speedster concept will be a limited edition model. Uh, what's special about it is that it's kind of retro, obviously, mm -hmm. but it's kind of the purest 911. Because there's no roof to it, correct? It's only a two-seater. It's naturally aspirated. And? Manual only. Yay! <laughs> and and it spins to nine grand and puts out 500 horsepower. Yeah. So that sounds, that's checking all the right boxes for me. I mean, I wish it had a roof, personally, but everything else. you're not a convertible person? No, not at all. I'm not really a convertible person, but I would drive this any day. Yes, yeah, so it's quite nice. It and is so cool. This is definitely, maybe in the next 70 years, it's going to be up here with oh, these yeah. cars, you so know? this car will Absolute definitely classic. be a collector's item. I, I can guarantee you that they're already sold out completely, um, oh, and they're only selling them to, like, you know, bona fide Porsche collectors. So you have to go, like, and be vetted or something, like yeah. a job interview? Yeah, I'm certain. And uh, I would be surprised if people would are actually going to drive these cars. I think people will just keep them in little climate-controlled <laughs> garages while well, their you values skyrocket, right? right? Yeah. Uh, and that happened with the 911R that we saw, which was kind of the, mm -hmm. the previous, like, quote, yeah. purest Porsche before this came out. Yeah. Um, and what about what do you think of the side view mirrors, Jody? They're totally different from what you'd get on a standard 911. That's why I love them. Is that what because, you love? Well, just by looking at this, you know it's something yeah. really different and very special. Mm -hmm. And I think if you're going to shell out that much money for yeah. a 911, it had better be visually special and different Absolutely. from any other 911 out there. And what's going on with the hood? Do you know? I don't actually know, but we know we all know there's no engine under there. Yeah. So what does that little valve go to? I don't know. We should I'm ask somebody. <laughs> I'm not sure, but we should ask somebody. You're the boss lady. You're supposed to know. I don't know everything. I almost bought a Panamera. Um, but yeah, this is a super special Porsche. Yeah. So I I hope I hope some people will actually take them out and drive them instead of just hoarding them in their garage. And, and, and to your point, watching your asset appreciate exactly, a lot. Exactly, exactly. So but why don't we head over to the Audi booth? We've got a couple products sure. to talk about there. Yeah. And it's just next door, not a very far walk. But um, we'll snake our way around because you've got to watch out for glass partitions. There's always a change in elevation, I, so you can trip I and fall. I say this every time we're doing one of these walk-arounds, is that I'm terrified of falling on camera <laughs> because it's happened before. Oh, dear. Yeah. So we mentioned at the intro of this video that, you know, uh, perhaps this auto show is in decline. A lot of automakers have pulled out. Yes. Uh, we see the same happening in Detroit. 
yeah, a number that's of automakers right. are not going to be there next year. Yeah. Do you think that's an overall trend in the industry, like auto shows are sort of passe, or is this just a little blip on the radar? What do you think, Jody? I definitely think auto shows are in decline. Um, and you, you know, with Detroit, that's what, historically one of the biggest auto shows in the world. Oh, yeah. And so now, uh, 2019 will be the last time it's in January. They've moved it to June, mm -hmm. starting in 2020. A much more, uh, you know, hospitable month in the Midwest. Yeah, and so auto shows are expensive for automakers to attend. Mm -hmm. um, and a lot of times they just can't justify doing it. Yeah. Especially, you know, with Volkswagen, it's not here at the Paris Motor Show. Yeah, which is crazy. They they're have such a huge brand, especially in especially Europe. Especially in not Europe. Here. Yeah, I mean, all of their other brands are here, like Porsche's mm -hmm. here, Skoda's here. Yeah. So they do, they are represented, but but yeah, they have a lot of other things going on yes. that are very expensive to deal with, i.e. diesel issues. What do you mean? <laughs> anyway, in, in response to what you just said about diesels, this is their future without fossil fuels, because this is the e-tron that they've unveiled here, a production car that is all electric. Yep, and, and this is Audi's first all-electric SUV. Correct. And it's going to have a 95 kilowatt hour battery that, of course, as you would expect, mounted low in the vehicle at the very bottom, essentially. Right. Uh, for obvious reasons, gives you that lowest center of gravity, best handling. Um, and there's not, uh, we know quite, we know some things about this car, but not a whole lot. Like the pricing in the U.S., it's going to start around seventy six thousand mm -hmm. dollars. Which uh, is that a good price? Do you think, or is that a bit? I mean, it is a premium brand. It's got a. You're I not going to get it for like twenty five. Yeah, grand, I think but. for what it is, it makes a lot of sense for that pricing to start there. And I think yeah. that'll be pretty close to what the what the GLE starts at. Yeah. Sorry, the the EQC. There you go. Yes. Oh which man. Which they haven't announced pricing yet, but it's it's, it's got to be, be the pretty same. close. It's got to be the same. Yeah. So this is a really important model for Audi. Uh, it's really interesting to note that the side mirrors here are not traditional side mirrors. Yes. They're uh, cameras. Mm -hmm. Which is probably a no go in the U.S. I believe FMVSS requires a mirror, at least it did. Well, I but guess they're we'll going to have to rewrite their codes yes. just to make sure these new course, technologies. Technology. Yeah. But here's one we can get a closer look at. Ben can pop in the interior if it's free. Sure. Um, and you can see the, the side view mirrors actually display on screens on the door panels, which is a very interesting touch. Um, it's actually really smart to do it that way, though, because so like Lexus also just came out with a side view mirror system, but it has okay. this like janky looking tacked on screen. Oh, yeah. So yeah. this is much better integrated. And I like this execution a lot better. But you were going you were going to say something about the range. Well, range, as far as we know, as far as I could find out, is not been official. I saw a couple sites that had estimates and it looks like it could be around 250 miles on a single charge, yeah. but I would imagine it's got to be more than that. I think it the has Mercedes to be. EQC had a bit more range with a smaller battery pack. Yeah, I think so, it has, these days, I think range has to be at least 250 as the yes, bare that's minimum. The, that's the cost of entry, yeah. essentially. Yeah, I mean, but, even the Leaf only had two something and people weren't saying, oh, yeah. people were like, oh, that's, it's not enough. I mean, in Europe, I think less than 250 miles on a charge is more workable. Yes, because nobody But in the US, if you live that. in Iowa, you're not going anywhere yeah. with that mileage. And what else is there? I thought it was very interesting. You get um, standard air suspension that adjusts the vehicle by about three inches of total travel up and down. But also there's an available tow package, which made me laugh very hard because it's rated to drag <laughs> up to 4,000 pounds, which 1,800 is kilos. Which is a lot. A lot. And, but what is that going to do to your driving range if you're towing anywhere near the max there? That's just going to torpedo it completely. Yeah. I mean, like, what are you going to be towing? Extra batteries so you <laughs> can charge it? A generator. A gen an electric, drag, a gasoline drag, a generator. Gasoline generator. <laughs> exactly. Well, let's move on. Uh, there's a lot of cool stuff in the Audi booth that we actually don't get back at home. Oh, yeah. And we can go through those a little Take bit. Take us on a quick wheel us through here, Jerry. All right, sure. Before so, we head to the next building. So this is really cool. This is the A6 Avant, which we don't get in oh, North America. beautiful wagon. Everyone loves an old wagon. And this is an especially attractive wagon. It's not brown and doesn't have a manual transmission, though. But people will still freak out about it. I, think, I actually think wagons are having a bit of a comeback right now. Um, and I mean, in Europe, they're still super, super popular. I just wish more people in North America would see the light yes. and start buying wagons instead of SUVs. I agree 100%. I think people our age are starting to think wagons are cool again. Well, like, it's like minivans too. Like you didn't want what your parents had. So we have yeah. a whole generation of younger people that have been living in crossovers that their parents have been driving. Exactly. So now they want something it's different. It's uncool. Exactly. Yeah. So I'm, Vanity. All, I'm all on the wagon train right now. Uh, 
what if else is there? If you want to keep... Wait, where's the oh, SQ2? Yeah, is that the SQ2? That. Yeah, yeah. That color is electric. Yeah. So this is something we don't get in North America. This is the SQ2. And I believe it, did it just debut at the Paris Motor I believe, Show? I believe the SQ2 yeah. did, yes. So this is just a little hot hatch thing. And of course it would be so much fun, but uh, they don't sell it in, in North America because we like crossovers and SUVs. But not high performance ones, evidently. Apparently But maybe not. people wouldn't pay the price this would cost, you know? I imagine it's quite expensive. Yeah. And Americans are used to things being cheap. That's, that's true, that's yeah. true. You get a Camry with discounts for 20 something grand, right? I mean, yeah, I know. It's this a lot of car. This so much fun, though. For not a lot of money. Yeah. Uh, what else is here? There's Let's... a Q8. You want to see the Q8? Uh, have, I mean, have we've have seen we, the Q8 Have we before. driven that yet? I have not driven the Q8. I believe Sammy has. Ah, Sammy um, has, has Hammy, a Hammy, yes. I called him <laughs> Hammy. Actually, you want to go to the Skoda booth quickly? Sure. There's a cool thing that I might want to take a look at there. So walking, walking, Skoda. That's Czech. Yes, right? it's oh, a Czech a brand. Group, of course. Yes. And they they have a lot of like I think they're more of a value brand, right? And um, just a sort of a, a different take on the typical Volkswagen products you would have, right? Yeah. So they have a really cool concept that came out at the Paris Motor Show, um, and it's a hot hatch, yeah. which we're all about that hot hatch life. But a very unique powertrain. Yes. That you might not expect in a hot hatch. Yeah, so uh, if you just look over there, Ben, it's right on the stage. It should be white, and it should be very handsome. It's covered. Oh, there's a lot of people there. Oh, goodness. Go pull the fire alarm. Clear them <laughs> out. So this is the Skoda Vision RS concept, and it's a hot hatch that is also a plug-in hybrid. Indeed it is. Which I think is actually a really good idea for hot hatches, just well, to it, give them that extra boost of performance. The instant torque you get from an electric right? motor. Yeah, and I think that's an awesome idea. Absolutely. And so this is kind of a competitor to uh, a GTI or something mm -hmm. like that. It um, looks more wagon-esque than uh, hot hatch yeah. necessarily. I think it's but I guess more maybe okay now elongated. that it's turned a little bit. Yeah. Maybe it is hatchback. Definitely. But I love the design on this. Oh yeah. Uh, the interior is also really cool, and it just looks really sporty. And I think people are going to have to start accepting that hybrid performance is going to be the new normal going forward. Yes. And I'm totally okay with that. Yes. Because again, instant torque, right? Yeah. That's all an engine really makes is yeah. torque. And, so, and an electric motor gives that to you yeah. right at zero, right? So you right? have to deal with a bit of the extra weight. Mm -hmm. That's the big is, side of it, trade off. The, that's the trade off. But uh, I think in fun factor, you will not be disappointed. No, ma'am. Yeah, so let's move on. Where, where are we heading? I actually think we have to go to the other pavilion. We do. Here we go, up the electric stairs. Where are we heading next, <laughs> the Jody? The electric stairs. So we're about to head into a new pavilion, and, and it's to see what I think is the most important reveal of the Paris Motor Show this year. I would totally agree. Yeah. When a new 3 Series comes out, that's a big deal. And I like it because it's not a crossover reveal. <laughs> <laughs> That's a very good point, because that seems to be all we ever see these days. I know, days. it's like, all we ever over, talk about these days. Crossover. So it's nice, it's nice to see uh, like a sports sedan instead. So the 3 Series is a really important model for BMW. They've sold like more than 15 million of them. Is since, that all? Since they first came out in the 1970s, that's wow. a ton. That's a lot um, of 3 Series. Yeah, and so as you know, it's kind of the successor to the 2002 that we all know and love. Mm -hmm. So it's a really significant model for BMW. and. The biggest reveal of the show, just because I don't think there were that many, like backbone products that came out this year. No, again, a pretty a pretty subdued show, I would say. Um, what is the model designation? It's G something, right? Twenty. It's G twenty. That doesn't change the fact that my favorite three series is still the E forty six, but you and everyone else. Oh. So I get it. You, yours is the E forty six as well. Everyone's is. Well, here it is, even under the hood. But <laughs> so this the is brand the new 3 Series, 7th new, generation. Brand new generation 3 Series. Like we said before, it's a really important product for BMW. It's new completely. So let's talk about it. So under the hood, I don't know if this is a diesel or a gas engine. Wind power turbo, it says. But this is the new 3 Series, and uh, we'll get the 330i in North America. And that's powered by a turbo two liter four cylinder that puts out 258 horsepower and 295 pound-feet of torque. 
We'll also be getting the M340i, which will have the inline six that everyone loves so much. Three and, liters, correct? Of course, as always. And that puts out 382 horsepower and 369 pound-feet of torque. But I understand the manual transmission is dead in across the globe now, Across right? the They're, globe. They've completely killed it. Yeah, they will have no more manual transmission, and the eight-speed automatic will come standard across the board. I hope that's not a big mistake for them. I mean, everybody buys automatics for the most part, yeah. especially in this sort of class of car. I mean, like, and I'm sad about it, but I'm also not surprised. Yeah. Like, that's just the direction that it's everyone is going It's an inevitable conclusion, in. right? Audi stopped offering them in the competitor uh, A4. Mm, so, S4, too. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So I'm not surprised. And for those of you who are complaining about the lack of a manual transmission, just go out and buy them, <laughs> and they'll keep making them. Yeah. Or get the, I mean, if you want one, you're going to have to get the M3, I would assume. I mean, we don't know yet, but I, they've got to have one in there still. I wouldn't be surprised if they don't offer it, period. Well, then Even go in get the, the M3. M2, I guess. Yeah, Keep I guess the M2 is our last option. Um, so, yeah, they're, this new 3 Series got a ton of new tech upgrades. But it doesn't... It doesn't look like it's new. That's the thing. It's no. definitely evolutionary design here. Yeah, but that's just BMW's way of doing stuff, right? Like, if they did yeah. anything too dramatic, they risk alienating the people who love the design. And I mean, there was nothing wrong with the design in the no, first place. So absolutely you, you don't not. have to screw around with it. Um, the most obvious changes are the new headlights and tail lights. Mm -hmm. It's a lot more aggressive. Something I can't seem to get over, though, is that there's a lot more character lines than yes. before, and I think it's a little bit too much. <laughs> is it too much? It's, I don't think they've gone overboard necessarily. I do like the little, there's a crease that's at the bottom of the doors that kicks up kind of from uh, the rocker panel trim, and you'll see that it, it kind of reminds me a bit, Ben, if you come around here, you, you can see, see just it. a little bit on the back door there. It reminds me of a Lexus IS, actually. That's what a lot of people yeah. have been saying, yeah, but I like it. I mean, it looks good. And of course, as soon as we go to point it out, Somebody sets their Access backpack denied. there. Yeah. Um, are you a journalist? Are you measuring under the seats? They're definitely measuring under the seats, but that's okay. No, um, it's not. Not in the press days. <laughs> GTFO. <laughs> um, so Ben's going to go into the interior here, and it has seen a lot of upgrades. For one, it is bigger than before, so there's more room for passengers and for cargo. That's every generation car. Each yeah. nameplate, it seems, gets bigger and heavier. Yeah, well, maybe I not mean, heavier, but bigger and bigger. Yeah, and bigger. bigger and bigger. And so this new 3 Series grows a bit in all dimensions, like the wheelbase, the track, the height, width, length. They're all a little bit bigger than they used to be. But BMW says that all of the models across the board will be lighter. That's important. Which is important, and we can all be happy about that. Do we know if they've gone to a lot of uh, next generation materials in the, like the bodywork? Is it aluminum, for instance, in a lot of areas? Or do I we don't not think know? so. I don't. I yeah. think all of that is the same. The I, I, know, I know they did a lot of uh, enhancements to the engine, making stuff lighter in there, course, just like little bits course. here and there, nothing major. But one of the biggest highlights of the new BMW 3 Series is all the tech that it gets. So as this is kind of becoming the norm, but the 3 Series will now come with uh, personal assistant, where you could say, hey, BMW, and have like it. A, like Siri on like, your iPhone or exactly. Google, uh, Google Assistant. That's exactly how it'll work. Uh, wow. And it'll, it'll allow you to use the navigation system, access the infotainment. You can even ask it stuff like, hey, BMW, what's my oil level? And it should be able to understand. Which is convenient since they don't have dipsticks anymore. Yeah. Um, and so you should be able to speak to it pretty naturally. Like you don't have to follow those very rigid rules that yeah. very older systems had. And I hope it works well because some of those older systems for you know yeah, don't like, work. Sorry, I didn't all. understand you. I, I, where is the gas station? <laughs> what? Can you repeat that, please? No, I did I not understand. Yeah. So <laughs> this should be a lot better yes. than uh, before. Mercedes also has a similar system now where you Do say, hey, they? Mercedes. Where yeah. sh should we maybe head over there? Because um, they have a number of important products that yeah, they revealed here. We could go over there in a second. Are we done talking about the 3 Series? Or I feel like there's a lot more to talk looking about. Looking at my notes, we did 8-speed. Uh, it's grown a bit. Looks the same, similar design. Yeah. 50-50 um, weight distribution. One I think thing that's worth mentioning. That is worth mentioning because that's a, that's a classic mm -hmm. BMW trait. Of course. Got perfect weight distribution. I did want to mention that it also has a new uh, lift. It's kind of a new suspension. It's a trick new suspension where it has variable dampers. Okay. And it's the first time that they'll appear in a BMW. And They've so never had adjustable dampers before? Variable dampers. So they're always going to be kind of looking at the spring rate and spring travel and adjusting based on what kind of what softness or firmness you need. Wow. 
without you doing anything. Oh, it like just is fully automatic. Yeah, it's then. fully oh, automatic. Okay. I think that's the biggest difference. Cool. Yeah, and uh, M Sport models will get an optional uh, this locking is an diff. M Sport here, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, it looks the... like it. It's got an. It's got an M badge anyway. M Sport. Yeah, it is the go. M Sport. So for all-wheel drive versions, they'll get a uh, a diff that can lock the rear diff electronically. Wow. So you can make it a rear drive car if you wanted to. Which just is like they did fun. with the M5, exactly, kind of. You can select yeah. if you want all-wheel drive or just to roast the rear tires. Exactly. So like all, of that, all of that all of that technology is kind of trickling down now to um, you know the more entry level models. And their bread and butter really of, exactly. of the car line. Yeah. Uh, something I also wanted to mention, I don't know if you can see it inside, Ben. But if you go inside, you can see that it has an all-new, fully customizable digital gauge cluster. Ah. Which is something we've seen before in Audis, and now uh, now they will be in the 3 Series. Ben just got rejected from the inside denied, of that car. <laughs> What else is that? I think that that's the big news here at BMW, of course. Yeah, there wasn't too much. I think they're showing much. anything else that we haven't already seen. The Z4. We've seen it already at Pebble Beach. Maybe we'll just do a quick once around that on our way to the next Yeah, booth. yeah, let's that? let's head that way. We can go to Mercedes. They have a couple important products. Yeah. Smart has a Smart something cool. Smart and Mercedes, cool. definitely. Yep. So let's just, a lot more folks in this booth, in this pavilion than the first one we were at. Yeah, this is a lot busier. This is. So walking right along now. Yeah, so we're we've passing. We've got JLR, Jag Land Rover to the left. They're not showing anything new that I'm aware of, but. Um, but they have an got, iPace on display, do. and uh, you recently drove the iPace. What did. did you think of it? it? Was, uh, I was blown away. It was yeah. fantastic. It drove really, really well. It's, it's fast. fast. It looks great. The interior is very nice. It's spacious. It's comfortable. Really, it does everything. It has a, what is it, like a 400 mile range, if I remember correctly? Wow. The thing I can't, I like, off the top of my head, I don't remember, but the thing it's I a like lot. most about the iPace is just how normal it feels. Yes. Like it doesn't, it doesn't scream out that it's an electric car, and it looks great. And it's it's a Tesla killer, right? Like because it's built by a real car That's company. That's what they're saying. The door finishes, or like, <laughs> things line up properly. Yeah. Jaguar has a, a little bit of experience with mass a production. A little bit more, perhaps, yeah. than the folks in California. It also California. looks a lot better than the the Model X, which I think yeah, is a potato. Yeah. Model X, especially the back doors. Like, oh. why did those ever make it to production? Put those on a concept car, sure. But for your production model, have these crazy ass, yeah. going well, doors. No, thing, it doesn't the work. Thing with the no. Model X, which is actually right over there. We can walk over to it so you can see what we're talking about. The thing with the Model X is that they would have... Oh, we have to go around. <laughs> I almost walked into a glass wall. Um, they would have sold a bajillion of them even if they didn't have those dumb doors. Okay. So I think they just wanted something that people could brag about in addition True. to it being a Tesla. It's part of the, the mystique of the brand, right? You've yeah. got to have these sort of a pu publicity stunt almost. Yeah, they of, just wanted something <laughs> flashy to show off, right? Yeah. But just look at the design in comparison. Like you see the Model X and it looks like a potato on wheels. It does, unfortunately. Or a potato with wings, I should say. <laughs> Winged potato. <laughs> And then the the uh, eye piece just looks nice, you know. Like the Ian total Callum lack of a grill. It. I don't it's just, mind it's that. It's unconventional. It doesn't it's, need a grill. It doesn't, but neither does the eye piece. But it still has just enough venting and cooling uh, yeah. capacity for its systems. Plus, the hood is vented, which actually improves its aerodynamics. I think everything on that car's design was yeah. uh, had the sole purpose yes. of improving aerodynamics. So it slices through the wind. Yeah, that's so cool. Um, Let's keep going. Let's go to Smart. Smart is next on the they list. They had something cool that debuted here. Well, they had something that debuted uh, here. You are not a fan, but <laughs> Sam McEachern back in the office is a really big fan of this car. <laughs> and I don't blame him, actually. I actually think it's kind of cool. But look, Smart is the perfect car if you live in a city like Paris. Exactly. Because parking is non-existent. It's, if you do find it, it's, I imagine it's very expensive. Um, and there's just there's not a lot of room, right? And if you're not going to drive an F-150 here, although I've seen it, you, yeah, it's there's crazy. a Ram running around, a Ram truck. But, <laughs> but what this is this, is what Jody? We came here to see. So, so uh, this is the Smart 4 Ease concept, and it's based on the uh, Smart 4 2 electric drive. 
And this was a special project that they made to celebrate the brand's 20th anniversary. Very young, a baby brand. Baby brand. And so this, this is fun because it is a two-seat, rear-wheel drive, rear-engine, mm -hmm. roadster thing. Yes. And it's all electric. Can you, and can you just imagine how much fun it will be? And I mean, look at the styling, just how short this windshield frame is. That's, it's crazy. It doesn't look like it should be that tiny. But it that's whole, part of the whole design adorable. with the roof missing, right? Yeah. And it also has this really cool uh, race car-like steering yeah. wheel, which yeah. I love. But you know, the smart in the U.S. at least is all electric now, yep, all of which North is America. the best way it should be because they had the, the gasoline engine was kind of slow, and the original transmission that they launched just with yeah. was that automated manual, just awful that was in the every driving situation. the slowest shifting thing yes. I have ever experienced in my life, and so I was not a fan of the smart car until I drove the electric model, which and all is of a sudden not bad. it made so much sense. The electric model is just so good. So it, this is a fun little concept. It'll not be uh, made into a production car. It's really just a celebration of everything SMART stands mm -hmm. for, and it kind of combines uh, two concepts that they had from the past, which is pretty cool. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. So we got another EV to talk about. Whoa. <laughs> See, that's See, what I'm I afraid of. Took you a spill almost there, yeah. folks. That's I a. Laughed my ass. You well, you did anyway. I know. I know. All right, well, let's head over. Let's to head over to the Mercedes booth. The EQC. They actually have a couple of products here that debuted in Paris. Uh, let's go see that. The EQC. Yes, the EQC, All which right. is Mercedes' first ever electric crossover that will compete with the e-tron we saw earlier. That's right. Which design do you prefer, Jody? They're, they're definitely, you know, representative of each brand. Yes. Different take on, on what an, an electric vehicle should look like. I but think, do you have a preference? I think I prefer the way the Audi looks. It just looks a bit more conventional to me. Mm -hmm. I feel like this is a little bit too, uh, like, round, if you get my drift. Yeah, it's a bit smoothed over, yeah. perhaps. Uh, and, and I can see, again, it's because they don't need a grill, right? And, and everything is made to enhance aerodynamics. So I can understand why they designed it this way. Uh, I think it looks good, though. I just oh, prefer the Audi. Oh, it's definitely handsome. Yeah. Absolutely. But you get an 80 kilowatt hour battery pack here, which should provide a 450 kilometer range. That's about 280 miles in in Murica. In Murica. So a, a pretty. It's a good enough number, but I think it should be more. Yeah, uh, I remember when this car first debuted, they said it was only, they said the range was only about 200 miles, and then Whoa. everyone was like, blah, blah, that's not enough, how are you supposed to compete? And then like a week later, they were like, oh, sorry, we meant about 250. Like, they revised their number. Um, and they so might, you think somebody in the communications department made a typo? I don't think it was a typo. I think originally people want to kind of give you conservative estimates. Of course. And then when they come out with their real number and like real owners start saying, wow, I got way more range than they advertise and it's a very positive message. You don't want to say it'll have a 520 mile range and come out with 280. Exactly. Oh, so I think that be might bad. have been what happened here. Um, but uh, interestingly, very similar size to the Audi e-tron that we saw earlier. Yes. Um, similar shape, of course. Uh, similar battery capacity. Similar range, we're thinking. We don't have official figures from Ingolstadt yet, but we're thinking <laughs> similar range. Um, this is a bit faster, though. This will go 0 to 100 in about 4.9 seconds. Cool. While uh, the Audi's about half a second slower, which is oh, interesting. Well, in the real world, you'll, yeah, you'll barely notice that. Yeah, you're that. not really going to notice much. But on paper, at least, there appears to be a slight performance advantage for the Mercedes yep. over the Audi. Uh, actually, you this, were will, this will go on sale in 2020. And I think the Audi will get here a little bit earlier. I believe it's uh, about the middle of next year. Okay, so it'll have a so little, little bit of an advantage but just I because would, it's on sale earlier. By the time this comes out, I wouldn't be surprised if it has significantly more electric driving range than it does. Oh, for sure. Because they're, they're, they're probably, probably low-balling it. They're with it a little oh, bit yeah. just to get Definitely. that uh, Definitely. get that way up there. What do you think of this? This is their other big reveal. This is the other big reveal they had here. Sure, this is the new GLE. Uh, and it's really important because the old GLE, uh, was, which used to be the M class. Was, was old. Was old. Just, just, it was the old. It was really, really old. And so this is a completely new, like bumper to bumper, yes. new generation model. Absolutely. Um, so it gets a lot of interesting stuff. It gets a two liter turbo four cylinder. 
That'll be in the U.S. because yep. no diesels for us. But we also get the cool, uh, the 48 volt mild hybrid yes, system. Yes, with which, the new straight six. Yes, which have I you love. Have any Mercedes vehicle with the straight six? Not yet. yet Not but yet. all of the reports I've read about it have been incredibly positive. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because then you, on top of just that, this smooth like turbocharged engine, you're getting the 48 volt system, which gives you electric boost. Yep. It gives you, in the in the case of this vehicle, I believe you can have adjustable dampers that run off the 48 volt system, and supposedly it's the first in the world that can individually adjust each corner for both the spring and damping rate. So I think that's going to be very interesting to experience, especially yeah. in like Detroit where our roads are horrible. It also has a really interesting feature and so it's a little bit hard to describe, but I saw a video of it and it was stuck in the sand and if you just hold this mic sure. for a second. You know how if you're stuck in the snow, you kind of like rock yourself out of the snow. Like you put it in park, you go a little, or sorry, you put it in drive, and then you reverse a little and rock yourself out. Yeah, the vehicle kind of goes back and forth. You can do it by itself. It's a special mode that can rock itself out of the sand or in the snow. I've never heard that. Is that is that debuting on the GLE yes, then? it's the first time ever that Mercedes has had this. <laughs> what do they call it? Like rock and roll control or something? <laughs> that would like, what, be amazing. What is it's the name? It's really hard to describe, but if you see if you see it in video, it's just rocking itself out of a out of a, a mess, and it's pretty cool. So it'd be working like sand or a snow. Maybe? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and so it just makes it a little bit more capable off-road. No one will ever use it, but I mean, it's kind of cool that they have it. They've officially run out of ideas, folks. That's, there's nothing that's left to develop. Idea. I think that's a really good idea. But if you've got all-wheel drive, it, it, how often are you going to actually go off-roading in your $80,000 Mercedes SUV? I think nobody, but it's an interesting yeah. innovation. I don't, an know how, idea. I don't know how useful it will be, but it is very interesting. Yeah. Um, Did you check out the interior, Ben? If you get a chance, swing yeah, around in there. We'll, we'll rudely eject these One folks. One of the cool things about this interior is that it has those uh, two giant screens. Yes, the MBUX infotainment yeah. system is brand new and on this thing. And it's an excellent infotainment system. It's, it also, uh, like the BMW, you can say, hey, Mercedes, mm -hmm. and just say, change the radio station, mm -hmm. or like, turn on the air conditioning. I didn't understand you. <laughs> Uh, so it's pretty cool, and and like the BMW system, the more you use it, the more the smarter it gets. Ah, oh, it's got like learning yeah, so uh, AI learn. or something. Exactly. Oh. I don't even and know it if it's gesture on. gesture controls too. I didn't know if you knew that, Jody. Where you there's a camera mounted up in the like the headliner. Cool. And it will see either it can determine if the front passenger or the driver is trying to manipulate something and it will change the interface based on that. That's pretty cool. That's a very clever idea. Very smart. Yeah. And the interior looks really nice too. Of course it does. I mean, it's a Mercedes. Yes. And it, I mean, it's a handsome looking SUV. I, I quite like it. Yes. Um, Much nicer than the old M class. Yes. Yes. Because yes. that one was so old. Very um, old. What else can we take oh, a look we, at they, here? They just got an opening in the driver's seat, Ben. If you want, if they haven't seen it yet, Give a quick look. I see. hope it's on. Oh yeah, it is. So it is gorgeous. That that's, new setup is so nice. That's a lot of screen. It Jody. is a lot of screen. Do you think we're getting to the point where there is uh, too much distraction? With I think digital displays. I think eventually there will be even more. Um, no, so I, Porsche I agree. is working on a system where it turns your um, windscreen into uh, what do you call them? Like a virtual? No, sorry, augmented reality. Yes. Yes. Yeah. And we're gonna, one of the uh, concepts we're going to talk about in the next haul from Renault actually has 16 displays inside. That's and a lot. one of them is 49 inches. It's basically <laughs> the whole dashboard. That's bigger than my TV at home. Yeah. <laughs> so you can watch Netflix and cruise. Netflix and cruise. <laughs> All right, let's All right, keep what's going. What's next, Jody? We're going, uh, we got a little AMG to talk about. Little AMG? How fun. Where is it? Well, uh, over this way. What, oh, Ben's pointing over here. There we go. The AMG A35. I was looking for the yellow one that was all over the press release. Yeah, they can't have yellow at their display. I mean, they've got white and gray. They have to keep it conservative. Blue. Yes, this has got to yes. be laid back. So this is the new A-Class uh, AMG version. Yeah, the entry car, yep. the entry performance model. Are we even sure? Like, we're not even sure we're going to get this in North America right now. Maybe north of the border you guys will. Maybe. But in the U.S., it's highly unlikely so we'll ever see this. It's a strange setup because in Canada, we get the hatchback and the sedan version of the A-Class, while the U.S. only gets the sedan version. Crazy. Because we don't like hatchbacks. US I mean, they'll get anything hatchbacks. good, apparently. Yeah, I mean, Canadians are much more receptive to smaller cars, well, your fuel costs manuals, more, and, and uh, wagons than, than you guys are. We're a lot more European in our tastes. And, and sensible, I would argue, because, yes. like, 
you don't necessarily need a gigantic vehicle. Yeah. If you occasionally haul six people, right? Yeah. I mean, go rent something for that one one occasion. Yeah, so the A-Class is a really important product for Mercedes. They get a lot of new stuff here. So like we just saw in the GLE, it gets the new MBUX uh, infotainment system. The A-Class gets it too, which is really impressive because this is their entry-level offering. And to offer something that cool on an entry-level product is incredible. Yeah. But is this really that entry level? This is the performance version. You're getting, yeah, you know, true. 306 horsepower, nearly as much torque, yeah. all-wheel drive. This is a proper luxury hot hatch. Yeah, but I mean, I'm talking about the regular A class, true. so like the A220 or whatever it is that we're getting. But this will be fun to drive, and I can't wait to drive it. So, question for the audience, all of you guys watching. We've got three new products here at the Mercedes booth. Let me ask you this. Which of these is your favorite? Do you like the new A-Class from AMG? Do you like the all-electric EQC? Or perhaps you're going to hang your hat on the GLE crossover. Let us know by leaving a comment. Which one would you pick, Jody? I think I'm going to pick the Vision EQ Silver Arrow way over there, which we can take a look at too if you want. It's, it's what is this, Jody? So this is this is a concept car that they came out with at Pebble Beach, actually. Oh, Sammy was there, right? Sammy was there, and uh, of course this is based on kind of like a retro race car idea. The twist being that it's obviously all electric. Of course. Yeah, and so you... EQ is their new uh, electric nomenclature. Yeah. Do you think they kind of were borrowing from Infinity? They, last year they had a very sort of similar retro-inspired concept yeah. they had at Pebble Beach. That one, the Infinity one, was super cool too. Oh, that was. It was also drivable. Can, can, can I say badass? <laughs> Bad <that> beep. <laughs> <laughs> ben will have to bleep that. Yeah. So this is a super cool concept. Um, it has a lot of details. Not a lot of details. Some details we might see on production cars, like the bronze details. The EQ name, of course. The thin rim, sort of. Are, the, are those really like half and half wheels, or is that just some sort of cover? This is like, not a drivable car. I'm pretty sure it's hollow underneath. It's just like a Rubbermaid tub yeah, with pretty wheels. pretty much. I love the tires have the little Mercedes star Yeah, that's symbol. really cool that's attention a, that, to detail. That's serious attention to detail. It'll have zero traction, but it doesn't matter. <laughs> when it's parked on the auto show <laughs> table, that's all you need. Yeah. So let's move on to maybe the next pavilion and uh, check out some stuff there. Let's go. All right, now we are in pavilion number one. We're going to check out some Hyundais. We're going to see a very cool sports car that you love, Jody. I do. And we're going to wrap up with a Ferrari or two. Fun. But okay. first, South Korea. We're going to go check Korea. out a couple. Yeah, the good Korea. We're going to check out a couple Hyundais. And the first one, let, let's see if we can find the i30 N option. Okay. So that's fun. sort of previewing some performance parts they're going to offer, right? Yeah, so the i30 N option previews the N line of performance parts. If you don't want a full on N, you can buy bits and bobs here and there to enhance the performance of your car. Um, we're not sure yet. This is just a concept, so we're actually not sure what cars you'll be able to get these options for. Um, but it is pretty cool that they will be offered. I think it's that one over there is the N option. And this says N line here on this one. So these will be like a la carte items you could get at a dealership, for instance, yeah. and have installed on your car. Yeah. yeah. So if you if you have one of these models and don't want like, or you can't afford the full on N, uh, but say you want better brakes, you could just get that if you wanted to. I see. Um, that's very cool. Yeah. Kind of the kind of the industry norm, but they're really maturing as an automaker. Yeah, and so it's really important for for Hyundai because it's the first time they've ever offered something like this. Um, and now that they have, you know, uh, Albert Bierman from BMW M working on the driving dynamics and these performance parts, I think it's going to be good times at Hyundai. Yeah, let's check out the car next to it because I think that has a few other parts, including they're showcasing an Alcantara interior. Let's see if you can get inside there, Ben. It may be locked. Give that a look-see. Yeah, so this is obviously uh, the most extreme version. Um, it has a lot of add-on parts that you normally wouldn't be able to find on a car like this. Like the Alcantara interior, a carbon fiber hatch yeah. and spoiler, and a different lit, a lip kit, a vented hood. Yep. All the sort of typical baubles you might expect in a high-performance <laughs> car. Yeah, I like it though. Uh, and so Hyundai is working on a lot of interesting things performance-wise. And so I want to take a look at this, which is the big debut that Hyundai had uh, at this year's show. What is it? This is the i30 Fastback N, and it's a car that we don't get in North America. The first N model that we'll get will be the Veloster N. Um, so this is 
a European model. It okay. originally came in the hatchback that we saw all those parts on, but okay. they've added a kind of lift back body style to this, which I think is kind of cool. So, but the Veloster and the i30 are, are essentially the same car, right? They're related. Same un underpinnings. I believe so, yeah. 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 But this is a different, more of a sort of Panamera esque almost. It's kind of that. Well, bulbous rear end to it right? yeah I think I think that the lift back style is having a bit of a moment right now mm -hmm. I think a lot of automakers yes. are going in that direction uh, Which just I don't necessarily get well it's just more practicality if you don't if you want the look of a sedan but you no. want the practicality of a hatchback it kind of gives you the best of both worlds I have an idea what how about just a wagon Yes, <laughs> of course you would say that, and of course I agree with you. Naturally. Um, but I, I actually don't mind a lift back style so much. It's a different option, I yeah, guess. Yeah, I think in, it looks pretty good. Yeah. I'm actually really, really excited to drive an end product. I haven't driven the Veloster N yet, and I'm just dying to. You're going to have a couple engine options, though, at least in the, uh, the fastback here. 246 horsepower from a 2 liter turbo, or you can get 271 if you option it up to the next step, but it should be the same basic engine. Fun. Zero to 60 in either 6.5. Four or as fast. Are you ready? Tell me. 6.1 seconds. Damn. To 60. That's pretty good. Pardon me, 62. Oh. So probably less than 6 to 60 miles an hour. Yeah. Which is properly fast, you know, for, for a little hatchback. For a little like hatchback, that? that's yeah. Awesome. That's great performance. Cool. But okay. let's, uh, we're going to go do that away. Okay. And I think we're going to find one of the cars you really wanted to talk about. It's a sports car. So let's head oh, this fine. way. Okay, yeah, let's go. It's, it's, Something maybe some of the uh, North American audience has not heard of before. The Alpine A. Ooh, okay. The A110. Yes. Yes. The A110. So this is another car that we don't get in North America, which I'm actually really salty about. Um, so this, people keep saying. Is that saying, how you get angry, Jody? You're just, I'm salty. I just get salty. I don't get fully angry, just salty. <laughs> um, so polite. So this car, people were saying that it's a competitor to the Cayman and stuff like that, but I think it's. It's aimed at a lower market than the Cayman. Mm -hmm. It's not as premium. Sure. You, you've got to bring, you've got to be a serious automaker if you're going to yeah. legitimately compete yeah. with Porsche. So I think they had like Porsche right like driving you. dynamics. Yes, because um, you can kind of get that in like a 4C, right? Yeah, exactly. Which is, I still hesitate to call a Cayman competitor or something because I mean, it's, it's just not, it's in the same ballpark, it's in but the, same ballpark, the but refinement isn't there really. No. Um, so this is the Alpine A110. This is a car that I've been really, really excited about, but I've never driven. Everything I've read about it has been amazing. Um, so it's powered by, wow. Oh, great. Somebody's All right, here we go. Alarm. Yeah. That's what happens when you do live broadcast. Horns go off. Uh, so it's mid-engine, which is a lot of fun. It has a 1.8 liter turbo engine that puts out 252 horsepower, which doesn't sound like a lot on paper, but the car is really light. It's rear wheel drive, and it'll be so much fun. Oh, yes. And this, again, is not anything new at the Paris show. It's not, nope. they're not having a press conference or anything, but it's something cool that's worth pointing out. And people are really excited about this car yeah. because it's a it's a fun purist enthusiast car mm -hmm. and as we all know there are fewer and fewer of them around. Unfortunately. We'll yeah. we'll we'll happen past some of the autonomous like lounges that Renault has, yes, which is I have sort my, of the antithesis of this. I have feelings about those oh, too. Oh, are you salty? A little bit. Okay. Let's check out okay. the, the sort of the body in white here. It's always cool to see those. Hey, the, the, hey unpainted the structure. the Bendem's over there. Ben is right there. He's running camera. <laughs> oh, the Michelin Babendum. The Michelin oh. Babendum's over there. He's going nuts. Oh, he's waving. He's gesticulating. You probably can't see him. He's waving. Oh, the he's turning around. Oh, there he is. Has he lost weight? He's looking good these he's days. He's lost the a couple of roles. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah. But here's the Alpine A110, sort of under the skin, if you will, and looks like a lot of extruded aluminum, a la Tesla, you know? Yeah. Anyway, let's keep going. I'm really sad that we don't get this car. Uh, let's walk through the Renault area. There's a lot of interesting stuff to see over there. Uh, I think Renault has some of the coolest designs right now, actually. If we can see any of them, it's quite busy here as well. But let's see, have they cordoned it off, perhaps? We can't, it don't appear to be able to go in for some reason. 
Perhaps we have to go around to the other side. But um, that's very, such much that's disappointment. That's Let's just go to their competitor, Peugeot, instead. <laughs> <laughs> well, that blows. We can't we get to the cars we wanted to show you. Denied access, and I asked her why, and she said important business. So very official. We can't show you, but Ben will have to loop in some footage of the Peugeot concept that we wanted to show you, which I love, and it's actually my favorite car of the whole show. Your I'd say. Favorite car. Yeah, I think it's. Okay. I think it is so cool. Right. So it is the. It's called the Peugeot E Legend. Yes. Uh, and it's a throwback to the old. Retro Peugeot, the 508 or the 504? 504, I believe, is what they're. It's like a concept version, a coupe version of this this iconic Peugeot, and the, it's been sort of. It, it has that old school look. It's kind of boxy. Yep. But it's really tastefully done. It looks so good. It's very cool. It's also all electric and fully autonomous if you want it to be. Yeah, and uh, if we get to see the interior later, it's mm -hmm. this gorgeous like teal velour. Which I it's love. Making a, like a 70s continental or something. It's that making was, a comeback. That's, it, I would not immediately think velour would be a popular interior option for the 21st century, but perhaps velour's day has come once again. Yeah, and um, so remember the we'll Honda Urban EV concept mm -hmm. that came out a little that while little ago? Little hatchback one, little the white retro one, one yeah. and people were losing it over it because people, it was you. so yeah, because it was so cute. And it was just a really good example of an electric car that people would be really excited about buying. That's not a Tesla, right? Mm -hmm. Um, and so I think if Peugeot actually made this car and it looks like that concept, I think it'd be really popular. Absolutely. I would be really sad that we the wouldn't be able to buy it in North America. It's dynamite. It's so good. I think they need to make production cars that look like that. Uh, and Peugeot actually said, like, we're not going to make boring cars anymore, so here's this amazing concept. Yeah, and so it has something like 16 display screens inside. <laughs> Uh, some on the door panels that, if I read it, the press release correctly, are simulating a certain type of material on the doors that they're doing digitally, which is crazy. Right. Uh, also, the dashboard has like a 49-inch screen on it. So, I don't know if your TV is even that big at home, uh, but you could, I guess, watch Netflix. <laughs> While you lounge autonomously, yeah. whatever. Anyway, it's our favorite thing here. It's my favorite thing. What's your favorite thing? My favorite thing. Gosh, that's tough. There lot, there's not a whole lot to choose from, For honestly. Sure. But I would, if I were to, to pick a favorite, I would go with probably the new GLE. Hmm. It, they're going to sell a lot. It looks really nice. The 48 volt, uh, you know, addition to uh, to the drivetrain with the three liter inline six, I think is going to be a dynamite powertrain. It's spacious. The interior, super well done. Yeah, there's a lot of tech Lots inside. Lots of technology. I think it's going to be an absolute winner for them. And awesome. finally, because the the outgoing one is so freaking old. I know, but it didn't exactly affect how well it sold. People were no. still buying they it like crazy. The Mercedes logo. <laughs> yeah, it'll snap it right up. Yep. Yeah. Uh, so let's go try to see something else that we can actually get access to in this pavilion. Do you think we can get maybe to Suzuki? And Ferrari. Or, yes, to the other side to Ferrari. Let's try. Onwards. Well, we finally, finally made it to the Suzuki booth. This finally. is the Jimny. It's so I cool. I love the Jimny. Look we at this, a locking diff, a mechanical locking diff for this little guy. Yes, this vehicle is body on frame, live axles, low range gearing. It's like... It's like a miniature Jeep Wrangler they built in Japan. I love the whole idea of this. For those of you who can't afford a G-Wagon and want something boxy to go wheeling in, this is the coolest thing. And the interior, it's definitely built to a price point, but that's all you need. This is an yeah. affordable vehicle. Well, the thing is, like, if you're going to take it off-roading, you want something that you can like hose down or just at least will be rugged. And all of this looks like pretty good. Look at this long throw shifter. I know. Can you imagine how fun that will be to drive? It's got a back seat. It's got decent. Let's check out the cargo space. Because, let's see here. This will tip forward. Not a lot of room back there. You're not going to fit uh, someone my size very comfortably. I would fit back there okay. Yeah, you probably would. Yeah, so one of the things that I, I love about this is the the retro opening hatch and the spare mounted or the mounted spare tire. Oh yes. Not a lot of cargo space. But the wheelbase is so short. It's I know. this is tiny. It is adorable. Is it totes adorbs? It's totes adorbs, and I know a lot of people at home who would really, really like one of these. 
didn't here if you hold this sure just going to demonstrate these seats it looks like they fold quite easily yeah so you get a good amount of cargo space the uh, back of the seats is uh, covered in plastic so, so a nice durable off. surface yep no trim back here gives you a rugged look but who's building body on frame anymore with live axles? It's crazy. Especially it's this so size. Out of left field, yeah, right? I mean that's why they're not selling it in North America. Um, and I think a lot of people would love this because Jeeps are getting pretty expensive these days. They're crazy. A Wrangler is insane. Yeah. I mean, you look at an Unlimited, which is what everybody, a lot of folks buy. Yeah. It's, it's a lot of money. And Jeeps, yeah, they're just getting really expensive. And so this will be a nice option for someone who can't afford it. And it's awesome. It's so cute. Okay, let's keep <laughs> what going. What are we heading next, Jody? What do you want to uh, see? So, uh, you want to stroll have... through Suzuki and... Yeah, sure, let's go. Because I mean, a lot of these products are not offered in North America. Obviously, they're well, not. Suzuki, the brand isn't in... Suzuki left North America a long time ago. Um, I think they were ahead of their time. Remember the Suzuki SX4? All-wheel drive, all -wheel drive little, little compact car, yeah. And it was a little bit lifted, and so now that's all the rage. It's um, like a whole new class of vehicle, right? Let's walk that way. All right. Ferrari oh. is that way. And one other brand, a brand new automaker is sort of having its coming out party here, oh, right? Oh, yeah, that's right. So this is an automaker we've never seen before. Um, and it's actually really, really interesting because they're Vietnam's first ever automaker. Yes. Have you ever heard of a Vietnamese car company? I have never heard of it. Um, so this, it's kind of interesting what they're doing because they're licensing old BMW yes. platforms. Yes. And their their stuff is designed by Pininfarina. Wow. So you get style, you get proven dynamics and technology. Yeah. So um, you get German engineering, German chassis engineering. You get Italian design. Um, and then maybe... Some pho. Some pho, is yeah. It, that's Vietnamese, right? I'm not confusing that with something else. Am so, I? So they came out with two vehicles here at the Paris Motor Show. And uh, both of them are slated for production, actually, in their home market. Yeah. Not going to make it to North America, I don't imagine. but Not yet, anyway. Yeah. But these but they days, you never know. They should meet all the emissions and sa uh, crash safety requirements, assuming they're using you know, all of this BMW technology. I mean, so, they look pretty good. They're not, not on attractive vehicles, they not at all. They completely ready for production. They're also developing a whole range of EVs, of city cars, electric buses, and scooters even. Of like course. the bird scooter, right? Of course. Squawk! Squawk! All righty, so we're going from Vietnam to a much more established brand, right? A, a little bit. company with quite a bit of heritage. What are we looking at here, Jody? So Ferrari came out with two really cool models and they look like concept cars, but they're actually production cars. They're the SP1 Monza and the SP2 Monza. I thought they were only concepts. No, let's, let's look at them. Let's, Come over here. Uh, I wonder if we can go inside. We might not be allowed inside. Common folk like us. Yeah, we're not, we, we don't have enough money to we actually enter the We don't smell of, of cash, so yeah. we can't uh, walk in. But. So these, so this is one of the models, and it's a single seater, mm -hmm. and it's based on uh, like retro race cars. And so this seems to be a recurring theme with a lot of automakers. They're kind of revisiting the past for inspiration on new models. Because they've run out of ideas. If, Maybe. Yeah, I guess. That's a little <laughs> bit shady, but uh, they have a one-seat model and a two-seat model, and these are gorgeous. Very pretty, and it's a, sort of this open theme, right? We saw it with the smart car. We're yeah. seeing it here. Yeah, and I think that's just, there's no Speedster windscreen. Speedster body there's designed no the windscreen. Porsche too, right? Yeah, so you're, you're going to need some goggles, maybe a helmet when you drive it, but uh, they're both powered by six and a half liter V12s. And they have 860 horsepower, which is crazy. I don't know what you'd need that for, but guess how awesome. fast it is. Like guess guess the zero to sixty time. Um, seven point two. What seconds? <laughs> <laughs> they do it in two point nine it's seconds. Insanity. Which is crazy. That's like, you don't even have time to enjoy it before you're breaking the law by a factor of like two. Yeah, and so right? th these are very, very limited edition models. They will be produced 
They're built under Ferrari's new um, Icona line of cars, okay. which is just like super exclusive line of stuff like this. Mm -hmm. um, and I love it. I know Sam McEachern at home is a huge fan of these Ferraris. He was so they're excited. Beautiful. Yeah, we got the, this one's like the Batmobile almost. A and then this bit, looks yeah. like some sort of, like you said, racing car from maybe the 30s or something. Mm -hmm. And and this is a very interesting sort of deck to it as well. It's covering up the space where you would normally have a passenger seat. Yeah. It's and very so well integrated into I the rest of the body. I believe they're based on the super fast. Okay. Yeah. Other than that, I don't know too much about them. They're, they're of course, really cagey about pricing and stuff like that. They never they're tell. They're probably sold out because if you if, have to ask. Exactly. If you have to ask, then you're not worth the time and space. Hmm. Yeah. Go get a chimney. And yeah, have just much. as much fun for a lot less money. Yeah. Uh, where else should we go? I don't know. Just wander around. Uh, see okay. if we can get back to the Let's Peugeot concept we didn't get a chance to see, but I suspect it's still blocked off. I don't think we're going to be able to s to walk in there, but that's okay. There are some uh, Lamborghinis over here. No, Lamborghini isn't at the show, but this is a local Parisian dealer who has brought some stuff for us to look at. Same with Aston Martin. I see there's Aston Martin Paris, ostensibly the dealership here. So exactly. Still have a presence of sorts. I'm not a big Lambo fan. I just I don't I, love them. Have I you ever driven one? I have. It was a Gallardo, the manual, which was oh, fine. Oh, wow. This was six years ago, probably. That's but old. I don't know. My it's thing about Lamborghini is that, much. like, it's too much. Like, I would much rather drive something like an Aston Martin mm -hmm. or even that McLaren 720S that I drove. Oh. I thought it was oh. way more entertaining yes. than, like, a Huracan that I also was lucky enough really? to drive. Yeah. You'd prefer the I would McLaren. prefer a McLaren over a Lamborghini. Interesting. Yeah. I think I would as well. It's also just a little bit different. Mm -hmm. You know, if, if you're going to pay that much money for a supercar, you know, you see Lamborghinis everywhere. Like, they're not exactly common. But uh, in the supercar realm, they're right. quite popular. Exactly. Or McLaren isn't, is what and you're saying, McLaren right? McLaren isn't that popular. And when anyone sees a Lamborghini, they're like, oh, that's a Lamborghini. But they see a McLaren and they don't, they're like, oh, what's that? That's interesting. Ex I, I drove the 570 GT and that was the exact reaction I had. Nobody knew what it was, like what, yeah. what automaker but produced they it. they knew it was cool. Well, they knew it was something special. Exactly. exactly. Yeah, it was just because the, the way the doors open, the color, it's, it's low to the ground. The body looks like a spaceship almost, yeah. the way it's curving and, and, and unlike a chisel job. So nicely. Like it was a, a dedicated supercar like it was fast the performance was amazing but it was also very very comfortable and civilized and it was not intimidating to drive which i was really surprised about i'm surprised you well maybe the 570 gt is different but i didn't find it all that civilized when i drove it oh really it the would shake the, the, the vehicle would kind of shake at idle oh. um it was loud well that's the pole man's mclaren <laughs> i had the super series mclaren okay it's a you little did bit different. you did high <laughs> highfalutin jodes yeah not and the it fancy was, one. Nothing shook. It was it was quiet. It was comfortable. How was the speed? It was incredible. It it's was mind bending. Mind bending. And the only complaint I had is that maybe McLarens aren't known for sounding that good. So the so the Lamborghini definitely sounds better than McLaren. But that's like my only complaint. If you can call that a complaint. It's like a, ha a hair dryer or something. It's not that bad. But anyway, thank you so much for tuning in to our walk around of the Paris Motor Show. I know it didn't go as smoothly as we would have liked because There's that's something how special things, going on there. I don't know what. That's just that's just how things go in France. Things never go as planned. But thank you for tuning in. We hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments, and we'll try to come back to them later. And uh, the next auto show we'll see you at will be the LA Auto Show in November. It's coming up fast. Yeah. We'll so we'll there. see you there. Thanks for watching. Take care. Bye.